The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Even while you are maturing spiritually, you can still enjoy yourself even in your imperfect state. I said, even while you're maturing and changing, you can enjoy your imperfect self. I said, you can enjoy your imperfect self. All right, well, let's try this one. We're going to talk about farming the happy habit. <laughs> The root desire of every human being is that they just want to be happy. I mean, truthfully, wouldn't you say that that's the truth? Abraham Lincoln said, people are about as happy as they make up their mind to be. Groucho Marx said, each morning when I open my eyes, I say to myself, I, not events, have the power to make me happy or unhappy today. I can choose which one it's going to be. Yesterday's dead, tomorrow has not arrived yet. I have just one day, that's today, and I'm going to be happy today. Amen? Now let me tell you something, I'm not just like, I'm not really like this great morning person. Dave wakes up every morning and I said to him this morning, I said, do you ever wake up and not feel like talking? <laughs> I mean, for 47 years, not every day, but he'll get up, oh, what a beautiful morning, oh, what a beautiful day. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just not, I mean, I'm not a really great morning person. So if you don't, if you don't wake up with that, which I mean, I have one daughter who's like that. <laughs> I'm more like, Now, honestly and truly, if you are more like that, you might have a little more of an inclination to start thinking things that wouldn't be the best in the world for you to think. <laughs> and so I'm telling you, I have to make a decision pretty much every day. This is the day, and that's probably one of the first scriptures I quote when I get up. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Come on. You're gonna be happy when you decide to be happy, not when you wait to feel like it, not when you wait till you don't, till all your circumstances dictate happiness to you, not if you wait until everybody's doing everything you want them to do, or you have everything that you want to have. You're gonna be happy when you make a decision that you're going to be happy. Is that right, all you beautiful ladies from Puerto Rico over there? Maybe I just ought to get on that plane and go home with them, I don't know. Yay. I've never been there, I might like it. I love it, they said I love it. Make happiness a habit. Be so happy you drive the devil stark raving mad. He's so happy about your depression. He's thrilled about your disappointment and your discouragement. He's so thrilled when everything is down. Oh, but it begins to irritate him when you're happy, when you smile and you say, I am gonna enjoy this day. Well, how do you expect me to enjoy my life, Joyce? I've got all these problems. Everybody in this room has got some problems. Everybody does. Just because you don't know what they are doesn't mean that they don't have them. And I'm telling you that happiness is a decision that we make. Well, I just don't have that kind of happy, slappy, clappy personality. I don't either. <laughs> but I decided about, probably now about 20 years ago, that I was gonna be happy. You have to decide first or it's not gonna happen. And I, one of my problems was, was I was not fully convinced that happiness and joy was anything that was a premium as far as God was concerned. I, I didn't, I, I don't know. I didn't even really have a revelation that God really wanted me to enjoy my life. When I was a kid and being abused by my father, I can remember getting in trouble for laughing. 
because my dad was just a real sour puss and he just didn't, he was unhappy and you know, unhappy people can't stand to be around anybody that is happy. And then because I started being abused at such a young age, sexually by my dad, I never really got to be a child. And so here I was an adult, I didn't have a healthy child in me. So I really didn't know how to just enjoy things. All I knew anything about was survival and responsibility and work and get the job done. And I just did not know how to enjoy my life. And I kept hearing all these sermons like I'm preaching today about being happy and the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I thought, well, where's mine? And I started studying, really studying joy in the Bible, starting with John 10, 10. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And I saw that it was the will of God that Jesus died so I could enjoy my life. And he died so you could enjoy your life. Now that's a pretty shocking thing. Jesus died so you could enjoy your life and so I could enjoy my life. So I don't think that we're doing him justice if we just let the devil suck all the joy out of us and let our circumstances suck the joy out of us. We need to make a decision today that we are gonna be happy and enjoy every single day of our life as long as we're alive. And you know what? If you wake up every day in a bad mood and you think about the negative things, it's because you got a habit of doing it. I had that habit, I got it from my dad. He was sour and everything was bad and something wrong with it and always looking for the next disaster and I just became that same way too. And after Dave and I'd been married a short period of time, he looked at me and he said, what is wrong with you? Because <laughs> he was real happy and you know, had a positive attitude. And this was what I said to him. Well, if you don't expect anything good to happen, then you're not disappointed when it don't. <laughs> Honey, I've come a long way, <laughs> a long way. Thankfully, that's been 47 years ago. And you know, it wasn't easy for me to break those habits. And I, I've had to quote that scripture a million times. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. I've had to meditate on John 10, 10 a lot. But you know what? I'm really a happy person now. And I have days where I have to decide to be happy. Not every day is it a big decision, but there are days when I still have to decide, you know what? I'm not gonna get off in that, been there, done that. Sometimes I'll even say to myself, I'll feel my mind going, I'm like, don't even go there. Don't even go there. I've been there, I've done that, I've been around that mountain. It's not gonna do any good. Can I tell you something? If you have a problem and there's something that God leads you to do about it, then you need to do it. You just need to make a decision and do it. And if you can't do anything about it, then you need to believe that God is God and you need to go ahead and enjoy your life. I think sometimes we think if we have a problem, then it wouldn't be right to enjoy ourselves. You can't find that in the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible that says it's wrong for you to enjoy your life. Matter of fact, why don't you enjoy yourself more than ever? And by doing that, you'll be showing God that you really do trust him, that he's working on things, and that he's, it's not being irresponsible to enjoy your life while you have a problem. If you can do something about it, do it. But if you can't, then there's no point in letting it destroy your life. Now look, even while you are maturing spiritually, you can still enjoy yourself even in your imperfect state. Yes. I said, even while you're maturing and changing, you can enjoy your imperfect self. I said, you can enjoy your imperfect self. You can enjoy your imperfect self. <laughs> Learn to laugh at yourself a little more and stop being so intense about everything that's wrong with you all the time. <laughs> ask God to change you. The Bible says, ask and receive that your joy might be full. When we cast the care of it on God, then we can have joy. God, I wanna change. I need you to change me. I can't do it without you. And I'm not gonna hate myself while you're working on me. I'm not gonna be mad at myself all day because I made a mistake yesterday. This is the day that you have given me and I am going to rejoice in it and be glad. The happy habit. How about examining your goals? Maybe you're not happy because you're just not doing the right thing with your life. I think a lot of people keep jobs they hate 
because they're afraid to take a step of faith to go out and try to do what they really want to do. Or you keep a job because it's more money. Can I tell you the truth? You'd be better off having a little less money and being happy. Dave and I were down at our inner city church. We call it the St. Louis Dream Center. And uh, we were down there a few weeks ago and we met the man that is running a, the food pantry down there now where it's just set up so neat. We have this food pantry. It actually looks like a, a little mini grocery store and, and the, the people in the neighborhood who, who don't have enough to get through the month or who don't have what they need to eat, they can come in there and get their little grocery cart and just shop and it gives them dignity because they don't feel just like they're getting a handout but they can actually go in there and shop. And so we were down there and we met the man that we hired not too long ago. We weren't involved in the hiring, so we didn't even know he'd been hired, but to run this food pantry. And in talking to him, he shared something interesting. He said, I was a stockbroker for years, and I just wasn't fulfilled. So he, went, he said, I went to medical school for a year, and I still just really wasn't fulfilled. So then he said, I sold stocks privately for a while, and yeah, yeah he said that. And then he said, I saw this ad online about running this food pantry. I've never done anything like that. But it just kind of felt like, hmm, I'm a, I think I might like that. And so he came and applied and got the job and he said, I have never been happier in my whole life. So now here this guy was in medical school and a stockbroker, not happy, probably making more money. Now he is in the inner city in one of the worst neighborhoods in town, running a food pantry and dealing with poor and underprivileged people all day long, and he's more fulfilled than he's ever been in his whole life. I, some of you need to think about this. <laughs> if you're not happy, maybe you need to think about, well, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing in life? And you know, you don't have to get all weird about it. You know, say, oh my God, that's my problem. I'm not doing the right thing. But some of you already know you should be doing something else and you just won't take the step of faith to do it. You're still back there on, on the last habit about being decisive. <laughs> I got any takers on this one? <laughs> Woohoo! Hey, that's a whole bunch. Don't be afraid to do something different. Don't be afraid to change and don't let money rule your life. Now look, I know you gotta have money. I know you gotta pay your bills. And I know that you can't just walk off from a good paying job and go do nothing. I mean, I'm not suggesting that you just go lay on the beach all the time because that's what you'd like to do. <laughs> but I do want you to be happy. How many of you are ready to be happy? <laughs> Take some time to form good relationships. Good relationships make you happy. Good relationships, a good relationship with God, a good relationship with yourself, and a good relationship with other people. You can't be a good friend to too many people, but you should have a few really good friends and then lots of acquaintances. Love everybody, but don't think that you can have a deep, intimate relationship with everybody. You just don't have the time. Now, I want you to take responsibility for your own joy. Let me read you a story. I had to get down here in the light. <laughs> Melanie is a 60-year-old woman who'd been married for more than 40 years. Her husband, Don, is a history professor at a small college. Don has always loved history. And he gets tremendous satisfaction from teaching history. <laughs> now, Don is satisfied. Melanie's not. The Civil War is his passion, and in his free time, he writes books about specific battles or key individuals of the war. One day, Melanie confided in a friend that she had been unhappy for years because...